So if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that I really love the Weber kettles. I actually have three, and I love it when I find an accessory that I've been wanting that's gonna fit the need that I see for it. And that's what I have today. This is the Santa Maria grill attachment for the Weber kettle. This is custom made by the Burn Shop in Wichita Falls, Texas. They're a custom metalwork company. I've purchased custom made grates from them before for my pellet grill. They also make this sort of attachment for the PK series of grills. But I was really happy when I saw that they were coming out with one for the 22 inch Weber kettle. Now, if you're not familiar with what a Santa Maria grill is, it's basically a grill which you can raise and lower. It has a wheel and a locking mechanism, and you can raise the grill up, lower it down. Let's say you want lower heat, you position it higher, or you're gonna do some direct grilling, you get it right down there. Now, when I received this grill, I assembled it. It was a very simple assembly procedure. I'm not a big person for those unboxing and assembly things. It's just a few bolts you put together, but I will show you something in a minute on how you might want to do this when you assemble it to make it a little easier for the performance of it. Because remember, this is handmade, custom made. These are not made on a big assembly line. So there are variances, plus it's metal. Metal moves when it heats up. So I'll show you that in a minute. But when I assembled it, I went through sort of a burn-in procedure where you season the cooking grate. I posted that footage on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you get to see some behind the scenes things there before they actually go into a video. And the cooking grate, like their other cooking grates, is made from carbon steel, so you do have to take care of it just like you would cast iron, but it performs great. Now, there are other manufacturers of Santa Maria grill attachments for the Weber kettle. Why did I choose this one? Well. The major reason I chose this is because many of the others rest on the rim of the kettle and that raises the center of gravity. And when you're dealing with something that has three legs, if you have a lot of weight in there and you're moving it, it can tip backwards. That's happened to me with my cast iron grates in there. With this, the unit sits down on the grate tabs within the kettle and that's a lower center of gravity. So it feels stable in there. This feels really good. It doesn't feel like it's gonna tip when I move it. One other thing about this, there's some questions I got after I posted that video and the information on Instagram. It does fit on my s, &S Grills kettle. It transfers right between the two. So now let me show you what I was talking about, about the assembly procedure and something you can do to make things a little easier. But it has to do with these little guides here on the rail, both these side risers and this top spreader right here. It's all one part. And when you raise and lower this, these little guides here ride along this. There's a little channel there. And if this is not tightened properly out against this base, it can bind up a little bit. I found that when I first assembled it, but there's an easy way to keep that from happening. And I'll show you that right now. So I have the Santa Maria accessory out on my little work table right here. And you can see that this is the base right here. This is what rests on those tabs in the kettle. This is the riser, and this is a tab that's welded to the riser with bolts that go through to connect it to the base. Now, because this is handmade and custom made, like I said, there are some variances. And especially when metal heats up, it moves, it expands. So what I found was, if you just put this on here and tighten these bolts, it tends to be in a little further, and therefore the grate binds up. Those little channels that slide down can bind as you get closer to the bottom base. But there's a very simple thing that I found that worked for me to fix that. Before I fully tightened these bolts, I took a clamp, put it on the back of the riser and against the base, and I tightened it. And that brought this tab fully out flush against the base, the outside of the rim, and increased that distance between the two side risers, and there was no more binding. Then I just tightened the bolts down in that position, and it's worked great since then. So what do you say we get this off of here, back on the kettle, fire it up and grill up a tri-tip. Make some Santa Maria tri-tip. So I have some lump charcoal lit in the Weber kettle and I'm gonna go ahead and add some red oak chunks to that because red oak is fairly traditional for Santa Maria tri-tip. Now, normally when I'm doing tri-tip, I do what I call my 110 sear method. That's not gonna work this way because I'm not gonna be running a temperature probe directly in there and leaving it in. 
So I'm gonna sear it first, just a traditional front sear, then we'll raise the grate and let it finish to 128, 130 degrees internal. So I'll have to check that every 10 minutes or so. And go ahead and raise this a bit. And we're gonna raise this up some more. All right, let's give ourselves a temperature check here. We'll pull it to the side a bit. And we've got 128, I don't know if you can see that. 128. So that's good. I'm going to get our tri tip off, let it rest for about 15, 20 minutes, and then we're going to cut in and have a taste. Well, here is our tri tip. It took about 35 minutes total to get to that 128 degrees internal. I could have let it go a little bit longer, but decided 128 is good enough. A couple things I'm not sure I mentioned. I don't even think I told you what I paid for the attachment from the burn shop. It was $360 and that included shipping. And as I mentioned, the assembly was very easy, but do take note of what I said about those risers and the base and how to get them snug so that there's no binding there. And it may not be an issue if you order one of these and get it. It's Every one of these is handmade, so there is a little variance each time, but it's easily adjusted. The other thing to remember is that whole thing gets hot when you're cooking with it. So that handle, the crank that raises and lowers the cooking grate, wear gloves when you're turning that because metal conducts heat and that heat's gonna go right up there and into that handle. So I would treat the whole thing like a cast iron pan. That's the safest thing to do. But now let's cut into this. It's been resting about 20 minutes. Let's see how it looks. I'm gonna go right here. Let's see. Oh yeah. So I am very happy with that. I love that rare, medium, rare and tri-tip. I'm gonna cut a slice here and we're gonna just have a quick taste. Oh yeah. Now this was seasoned with just a basic SPG rub, salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Cooked over red oak, tried to get as close to a Santa Maria style as I could, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna taste great, so let's see. Now this is USDA choice, but let me tell you something, cooking this over live fire just adds something special to it. This tastes as good as prime. So why did I get that accessory when I have lots of ways to cook things out here on my grills? It's a fun way to cook. And when I'm cooking and making food for people, I want them to enjoy it, but I really want to enjoy the process. That's why I do this. That's one of the reasons I do this channel to show that you can have fun when you're making great food. Mm. Thank you.